seconds to places. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy Sam Gilstrap locked inside his house in Sunnyside, Denver. And I'm coming at you live from the Zoom app. That's where meetings online can happen. They are an unofficial sponsor today, thanks in part to my producer extraordinaire, Dan Ribb. Dan, um, thank you so much for setting this up and l- allowing me to talk to one of the best stage managers in the effing business, folks, Rick Morales. Say hello. Hi. Hello. Thank you, Sam. That's so sweet. <laughs> no, no. Thank you so much for being available and trying this out for me today. Hey, why not? I mean, we're locked in <laughs> our houses for a while, so why not do something out of the box? <laughs> Absolutely. This is definitely outside of the box. Um, sure. It is a little too early for uh, scotch, but um, I'm locked inside and I'm talking to a friend, so we're going we're gonna to grease the wheels, as, as it were. And, I debated. Uh, I have I have tequila, but I was like, mm, I was like, I haven't even had coffee yet. So I was like, maybe I'll I'll do coffee first, and then maybe a beer or tequila. Who knows? There you go. There you yeah. go. Well, let me know what your unofficial sponsor of your yeah. side of the podcast is later. <laughs> um, today, folks, it is a nice little glass of Glenfiddich. Fourteen years. Nice. Yeah, we're keeping it classy when you're locked up inside. <laughs> Um, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, this is the Ghost Lights Podcast, episode 41. Um, we're going to try and get to 50, but the special thing about tonight, this is our first tech guest ever. So Ooh. it's great to get Rick's perspective on everything. Um, hopefully, he won't have too many line notes for me. Um, <laughs> I know I gave him a hand cramp the last time we worked together, but uh, he uh, was very kind and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Uh, it comes Rick, with the job. <laughs> it comes with the job, absolutely. Yeah, just dealing with my <laughs> my insecure voice. <laughs> anyway, moving right along. Rick, theater, yes. how did it happen for you? How did it happen for me? Um, you know, when people often ask me that, I mean, I've literally done this since I, like, was young. So mm-hmm. it's just been, like this continuation of like discovery. I mean, I started off in like pre-K where it was like, oh, we need like little singers. There I was like super ready to be up on stage and sing whatever song they taught us. I mean, Mm. my mom has home videos of me like practicing and like just singing from like all age ranges. Um, But yeah, so then like in elementary kept that up in some sort of way. It wasn't always plays, but it was, um, I was in handbells, so. We would What's handbells? Like, yeah. like, okay. No, they're like they're, they're like these little cylinder, silver things, and there's like, um, uh, what is it? Like, I guess it's like drum thing that hits the bell and it, you know, resonates some a note. Um, and we would go and perform in malls. We performed at the state fair. Um, and I mean, it was small stages, and they were like Christmas songs. They're just like little things here and there. And it was a small group. I think I still have the shirt. Actually, my mom, <laughs> my mom sewed it onto a blanket. She made me a quilt, and it, it was the Rosenwald Ringers. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, oh, gotta love moms. I know, right? Yeah, uh, it was a great gift. Um, but yeah, I mean, so it was always something like that. Um, you know, if I could be in some sort of concert singing, I would do that, and then really in middle school, high school is when I got the acting bug. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's how I started off. I wanted to be an actor. That's what I wanted to do. And I would, you know, try and be in all the plays in eighth grade. And then in ninth grade through high school, I was in all. Um, In South Texas, we have UIL competitions. I don't know if they have them here in Colorado. What Um, is a UIL competition? Well, they, they vary. So there's like a math competition and there's like a bunch of different categories within math in math, but they do a theater one and you put on your high school director picks a, um, I think it's 90 minutes that you have to perform a one act play. And it could be an actual one act or the director can get a play and it it would then be scenes from, but he picks out different scenes to kind of, you know, tell the story of the play or a scene from or something. but we had all these rules. You had to set up in seven minutes, take down in seven minutes or something like that. You could only have so many actors on stage. You could only have so many um, uh, minutes of music. Couldn't go over if you got disqualified. And I did that throughout high school. And I mean, it was, I mean, we had crazy rehearsals. Our director, I mean, he was great, but was a dictator. But that was really when I also got discovered uh, uh, stage management was Hmm. um, 
in in ninth grade, I believe it was, or my sophomore year, I was I was supposed to be in um, Greece playing. Uh, gosh, who was I playing? Oh, I John Travolta. No, I know, right? I wish that's what I wanted, but no. <laughs> oh, I forget. It was one of the like sub characters in Greece. Um, um, but uh, my mom bought me tickets to Shakira. <laughs> Oh, yes. I know, right? Mm -hmm. And it happened to be opening night. And I don't know what this director was thinking in his mind. I mean, he still ran the entire show. But he was like, oh, well, you can't be in the show because I can't have you missing opening night. And I was like, okay, fine. Well, what what am I going to do? He's like, you're going to be the stage manager. And I was like, what? And I mean, I really didn't know... I know, I really didn't know what the job entailed at that time (laughs) other other than what he told me. He was like, you're going to help me run backstage. So basically, I was at ASM. Mm-hmm. Um, he was like, so you're going to help me run backstage, help all the scene changes, and basically help him. So I was like, heck yeah, like little, you know, freshman Rick, power, you know, hungry. Yeah. yeah, I'll take this job. I got to tell my fellow students what to do. Heck yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> this high school? And, yeah, this was high school. Wow. Okay. Um, and that was like, we had just started that program too. Our, our teacher was new to the program or new to the country, actually. He's from Canada. Um, he had just started teaching there. That was his first year, the first year he started that program. So we were all learning everything. I mean, we performed in our gym. We would take over our high school gym for two weeks, basically. And one week would be to put up the theater or our mm-hmm. stage get everything ready and tech the show and then the following week we would put it up and then take it down so it was just like quick 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 and we would rehearse in our theater room or in the hallway of the high school it was awesome wow Wow. (laughs) yeah it was it was crazy it was crazy i mean i now when i go into like the denver center and i have these amazing rehearsal rooms and amazing theaters i just think back to where i started Mm -hmm. and like being on a gym floor and performing like it's amazing um but yeah so from then on I just like he would continue having me on the the tech team or be the stage manager for all the annual plays that we did every year Mm -hmm. and then he would have me act in the UIL one act competitions that we would have in the spring semester um so I was always like doing both and then in when I started college that's when I really discovered like no I really want to stage manage like I really really enjoy this like just being a part of of everything you know but mm-hmm. just still did some acting on the side you know for 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 the for the undergrad uh, undergraduate program that I went to and with some friends mm-hmm. you know I always had you know wanted the limelight in some way like <laughs> I'd be like I miss it I miss it even now I'm like maybe I want to like get a headshot and do some commercials or something like just something I say low key, but something yeah. like low key in that I don't have to commit like a certain amount of time for a rehearsal process. You know, I'm just like, I, I, I don't consider myself an actor, you know, mm. but. Do you consider yourself an artist? Yes, I would consider myself an artist. More so. Yeah. What yeah. was it about? I mean, for me, I remember what I was when I was in high school and college and. Mm-hmm. Um, an artist was the farthest thing from my mind. I think okay. I was just a, I was a lazy sack of crap trying to get oh. easy A's and get out. Of course, <laughs> yeah. of course. <laughs> but something about working that side of the the show, um, being involved in everything, was it was it just having your fingers in all the pies, or like what was it that drew you into stage management? It is, and it's just you know you get to you get to see everything, you know that. And that really is like one of the reasons why I love stage management. I'm with the, I mean, from undergraduate, I mean, because it was all my training of undergraduate. And then when I got my MFA, um, and then when I did community theater stuff, I always was a part of the process from the beginning. So either picking the plays or being there from like the very early on inceptions of what the, the scene designers are thinking about you know, to where you see the changes evolving, you know, mm-hmm. and then you actually get into the rehearsal process and then you see what happens there. And then you get to the show and then you throw in the audience and then you see what happens at that point and then you close the show. Mm-hmm. So you're with the entire thing, the entire time you see it. And that's what I loved about it. Just being able to see, see it as it grows, see what changes, 
interacting with everybody, just seeing how everybody works, seeing what the scene designer has in mind to what the costume designer has in mind to what props has in mind and what the director brings to it and sound and then lights and then what the actors bring into this, you know, cause it's always changing, mm-hmm. you know? And that's what I loved about it. And I got to see and have a voice in that process at times, you know, of like, oh, actually, you know what? I think, what if we tried this or this might work of just, you know, having an experience, you know, and just seeing what I've seen and worked on, you know? Um, but yeah, it was just, you know, just having a voice in every single department and just seeing what happens and just being like, oh yeah, that's, you know, just seeing that evolution and just seeing what happens from like paper Mm. to it really coming alive on stage is just yeah. awesome and you know being helped to facilitate that is even better <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah do, do you, do you find as as a high school student so on and then from there on do, were you always detail oriented on a lot of things or is that something that grew out of your experiences as a stage manager it grew because I really wasn't. I mean, in high school, I was not an, uh, an A student by any means. I like took the easy way out if I could. I was a C student. What is a C student? Like, <laughs> he's, passing. he's passing. For real. And now it's crazy to think that this C student who, I mean, I hated to read math is still not my strong subject <laughs> and I still have to deal with a lot of math, which is ridiculous. Um, but you know, I hated to read, I, I hated studying and I now have three degrees, which wow. is crazy. You know, like this stu- this high school student who hated that part of it is now like, I love learning. I love learning about everything. And I think that's why I also like stage management because I'm always learning something about something else of like someone else's department. Mm-hmm. But yeah, to, to say that, um, uh, you know, I was just like, I, and I hear, uh, you know, other stage managements of like, oh yeah, I was a straight A student and I'm type A and whatever. And I'm very detail oriented. I'm like, not really. I'm, I'm not, but especially yeah. during grad school, my uh, mentors uh, pushed me to use a paper calendar to take all my like, you know, all my dates and schedules and whatever I needed to put in. They're like, how do you, what do you do? How do you, I was like, I remember a lot of things. I was like, and it's in my phone. I was like, I got it. They're like, oh, I don't trust that. And I was like, don't worry. I was like, there's a method to my madness. I will never forget. I know exactly where everything's at. And sure enough, like I tried doing the paper calendar thing and I can't, it's just not in me. I mean, I'm just more technology oriented. So it's mm-hmm. like, if it's in my phone, if it's in my calendar, then I'm good. Cause I'm going to remember now nice. if it's not, then I will forget. I mean, my mind now as I've gotten older is slipping. Um. <laughs> how, how old are you, Rick? I am 32. Yeah, we should put you in a home now. Yeah. Some place for the invalid. Like 25. <laughs> <laughs> Not as <laughs> No, I, I, I think, I mean, some of... Uh, I can't say that. I mean, I'm 36 and I'm still yeah. as spry as ever. <laughs> With my messed up left knee, but um, anyway. <laughs> yeah, oh well, yeah, there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but no, like I was never really ever that. I mean, when it comes to 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 work, yes, you know, like I am like very detail oriented to make sure I have all my ducks in a row and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But I mean, in life, no, <laughs> <laughs> not in life. <laughs> How now, as you've grown in your career? do you want more from it? Like you said, you'd be willing, you might entertain the idea of like auditioning for commercials, getting that type of work. But like, since you've had, since you've been able to see so much of productions from multiple angles, do you want to try sound design directing? I mean, I think the next step for me would, I would want to try directing just because, you know, everyone has opinions, everyone has ideas. So, you know, just seeing so many things, It's like, oh, I would want to do this. I would want to do that. Oh, I have a show in mind that I would want to do or whatever. Um, But like with stage management, it's always just so different. Every show is so different. And especially, I mean, when I started off at the Denver Center, I started off with their off-center programming. So it was all off-site, immersive pieces, things that were so out of my wheelhouse, things that were so new to me. Mm -hmm. And I loved it because, again, I was learning something knew about theater how to run a show and then just knew about myself of just like oh you don't have to have a book with you uh, you know to run the show 
mm. um, which was a whole, that's a whole crazy different, you know, way to run a show. But yes, it was, you know, just working on so many, even with, you know, different productions that come through the Denver Center, they're all so different. You know, I worked mm. on Viet Gone, which was, uh, you know, this music, oh, beautiful show about um, uh, a Vietnamese, um, what's the word? Immigrants. Mm -hmm. um, and then I worked on a TYA, Good Night Moon. Two very different shows. You know, yeah. two, and then one was very, I was very busy on one show and it was the TYA. I was literally running around back and forth. You know, I would get in a good like 5,000 steps <laughs> at least, Damn. you know, just from running around. As opposed to Via Gone, the show was up and I sat down backstage because mm -hmm. everything was on stage. Totally different worlds, you know? So, yeah. you know, that's what I love about what I do is every show is different. You know, every, every production is going to have something new and they're all the, you know, the, the basic foundation is going to be the same. You know what's going to happen. You know, mm -hmm. the process is going to be the same, but getting there is going to be a little bit different. And that's yeah. what I love about it. There's always a discovery. Nice. Have you felt that um, your role has changed since you got into the game? Um, like fundamentally, like what's asked of you or has it stayed pretty consistent like that? I mean, it stayed consistent now as you, I mean, now as I've like worked more in the industry, I will get more directors that ask for input mm. or as a second pair of eyes, you know, on something. And that makes you feel good. Cause then it, you know, they're entrusting you with their vision, you know, to, you know, to have to take your opinion. They may not take it, yeah. you know, but they're still entrusting you with something, mm -hmm. you know, so, and, and that's what I like about that, you know, is like, as, you know, just as you get older that, you know, you do learn more, there is more wisdom. Uh, but I think that's more what I've learned of just like when, yeah, when, when they're asking me for like my opinion and when to give them like my honest opinion about stuff too, you know, like you got to learn to <laughs> yeah. where to draw that line to like, yeah, I, I should say something about this or like, nope, we're staying quiet about that and everything's mm -hmm. good and we're good, you know, but yeah. do, you, do, you, do you find like there's a specific type of director that you work better with without um, naming names? Don't get fired. Okay. Um, Rubik's no, cute is the safe word. No, I know. Right. No, yeah. not really. I mean, Sometimes you'll get warning about directors or they're this, they're that. But then, you know, for me, it's just like everyone has their quirks. Mm. You know, everyone has something they're dealing with, you know, and right now it's the show. And for me, what I'm doing is I'm helping them on this show, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, if a director happens to get, you know, frustrated in the moment because something's not happening, I know it's not taking it out on me for whatever reason. You know, I always just look to the other side of things. Um, but yeah, no, I've never, there's, there's not one director that I could say like, oh my God, I mean, there are plenty of directors that I would say, yes, I would work with you in a heartbeat again. Mm -hmm. You know, not only are they, they're cool, but what they're, what they're doing with theater, their direction, you know, how they, you know, how they treated their stage managers and their ASMs just as a, as a whole family. Mm -hmm. you know of course there are those people but I mean I would gladly work with any director again you know I mean even yeah. to the hardest director because then it showed something about me of just like my patients and how to control them and then that's the other thing I already know how they work mm -hmm. I already know what to expect yeah you know, so then I come in you know with an upper hand of just like I know what this is going to look like already yeah you know um so I always like that, especially with the new director, which happens often at the Denver Center. I'm always working with someone new. So it's, that's also great. It's just someone else I get to meet, someone mm -hmm. else I get to learn off of. Everyone has a different directing style. So it's just, that's also what I'm looking at too, of just like, what are they doing? How are they making their actors, you know, bring what they want without actually, you know, giving them, you know. A line read or a something. A line read, yeah. Yeah. You know. Physically moving them in the place. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's, cool. I always, I always like, I always just like seeing that, you know, how they, how they work with just with human beings and how they're treating them too. Mm -hmm. Have you felt that being a stage manager has that changed you as a person? In yeah. terms, not, I mean, we already talked about like the detail oriented side, yeah. of things, but like how Rick is out there in everyday life. Um, I mean, I am a little bit more anal about things. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like if I do lose control in some in, in in certain situations, I my anxiety level is a little like 
<laughs> rises a little bit. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it has just a little bit. But I also try not to like let work and my personal or like, you know, those two things cross so much. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's, it's also a part of who I am. You know what I mean? Like, I also what I try bringing what I am outside of work is like, I think I am a very relaxed and chill state person in general. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to bring into the rehearsal room, just like who I am as a person, you know, come in and there's, you know, there's no need to be at 100 all the time. Like mm -hmm. when there's no need, you know what I mean? Like, absolutely. And that's just kind of just how I live my life. Just like something happens, we'll figure it out. What's the next step, you know? And that's kind of how I want to live my stage management life as well. Like we're chill, everything's fine with what happened, what's going to happen next, what can we do, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but yeah, no, not too much. I try, yeah, like I said, I try not to let the two cross too much. <laughs> yeah, well, it's good. Uh, but yeah, like, again, like I am very, you know, a rehearsal room. I like to try to keep it clean and very, you know, detail oriented, detail oriented and labeled. But if you come to my house, like my cabinets aren't labeled. You know, I know some other stage managers that are like that where they have like things in their house like very like labeled they also have kids and stuff but like things are labeled or whatever mm -hmm. you know and like everything has its home and i'm just like yeah we're just putting stuff everywhere nice 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 you, you have like your shampoo next to your canned goods yes, but yes okay exactly. <laughs> <laughs> i gotta run out of the shower really quick <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> where's the toilet paper it's underneath the sink yeah. There, there are none, actually. There, there no. isn't any toilet paper. <laughs> oh, nice. You went with the bidet for this lockdown? Uh, you know what? I need, well, I do have toilet paper. I have I have a couple rolls left, but I do need to go get a bidet. I've, I've been wanting one. I've been wanting one for a while. It's cleaner and it's more, it's more environmentally friendly. <laughs> Absolutely. If uh, you're in need of toilet paper, I see Stephen Weitz has got a whole bunch back at the rehearsal I heard, space. <laughs> I heard. I heard. <laughs> go ahead and pick up a roll or two. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> with this whole um experience that is new to all of us um yes. I, I i know my situation i lost two jobs in a matter of 20 minutes yeah um the last week and and that's and that's like the tip of the iceberg for some people yeah. have you lost a job i because well, of this i mean i did and i mean i was off contract with the denver center i'm not going back until july um, unless things are pushed back because of this. So then I could potentially be out of my next job. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I also, when I'm at the Denver Center full-time, or I'm on contract, I work part-time at Floyd's Barbershop. Okay. Um, um, and then when I'm off contract, then I just go basically full-time. So we closed on Tuesday for Floyd's? two weeks. Yeah, Floyd's. Okay. Um, so we closed for two weeks. Um, no pay, of course. Fuck. Yeah. Um, and that's a, a TBD. That's not even a like, we're going to reopen on April 2nd. That's a, a maybe if we'll see in what state we're in and then mm -hmm. we'll go from there. So if we can reopen, that'll be awesome. I don't know if it'll be like limited hours, but then again, we may not open until like, oh, another two weeks after that. Mm -hmm. You know, so that sucks. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I have been affected. And like right now, I was talking to my dad and I was like, it's not really hitting me just yet. I was like, because I've been off for a week before and that's fine. And I'm like, okay, two weeks, we'll see how that goes. But like anything after that is, is a little, is a little scary. Yeah, you know? no, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I mean, I'm lucky in that I have parents that will help me if I need help. But mm -hmm. I know a lot of people aren't in that situation and they're not privileged as, as I am, you know, mm -hmm. or they have kids, you know, so it's not only like that they have to take care of themselves, but they have, you know, a family to watch out for, you know, yeah. so it's just like, this is just crazy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was, I got, I got very fortunate. I walked into work on Friday knowing that we were going to have the next uh, three weeks off and I didn't know if I was going to get paid for that time. Oh. Um, luckily I am. But then last night, Governor Polis said school is going to be closed till April 17th. Yeah. So my next day back wouldn't be till April 20th. Oh, no. no. And I got to keep my fingers crossed. I'm going to get paid during that time. Yeah. That extended period. So, I mean, yeah. And I've, I've got friends that they were just told, like, we're locking the doors tonight at 10 p.m. Don't come in for the next two weeks. I know. And they're like, they got nothing. I know. 
I mean, and, and like now teachers have to, I mean, I, I don't even know how that's going to work for them, you know, especially mm -hmm. for like elementary students, like how are they supposed, like what's going to happen with them? Like, oh. it, it, yeah, this whole situation is just, it's crazy. And like yeah. to think that we're living in this time is like beyond me that later on we're going to be in a history book somewhere. Mm -hmm. of just like how it not to do in the case of a pandemic exactly <laughs> yes and, i mean it's also true like i mean everybody's locked down right now or trying to be you know take mm -hmm. the safe route of just like you know being precautious of just like not interacting with a lot of people which sucks you know mm -hmm. that's what humans need is this interaction but totally. i mean i feel so much art is going to come out of this like writers are like doing stuff online which i love seeing like mm -hmm. doing like these i think it's like bread recipe plays that they're calling them so they're like giving them these scenarios oh and then they just write um and you have like 48 hours or 36 hours to complete the story and, like where you are just stop it turn it in and we'll read it or whatever that's cool um and i've seen a bunch of i think there's like three different um playhouses that are doing this which is awesome yeah. um so i just can't wait to see like what comes out of it what's said like you know society has so much to say right now and like mm. these writers have like uh like just so much to feed off of that mm. i can't wait um and that's also another thing that i love about theater working in stage managers stage management as i do a lot of new works so seeing that stuff of what's going to happen and like the next two year, like hopefully if I'm still at the Denver Center, um, at their at their summits that they do, the new play reads that they have of just seeing what's submitted and what's come out of it, because I'm sure something's gonna happen, oh, you yeah. know, or what's produced or what movie is made. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just yeah, it's just crazy. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> it, like, uh, it, it, it it feels like a movie, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's often like that would never happen and boom, here yeah. it is. And I feel like Dustin Hoffman's going to break in through the door. Yes, I know. An I outbreak like, reference. Outbreak, yeah. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> so we, me, and my, me and my roommate, Bradley, we watched it a couple of nights ago. There's a yeah. cat in the background. Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, my dog's right at my feet. <laughs> oh, I would gladly trade my friend's cat for that dog. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Hopefully he doesn't hear that. No, he will. No, right, right. Damn it. <laughs> anyway, um, no, but yeah, we watched Outbreak a couple of nights ago, and it's just like, I'm sure it's nothing like this, but right. it's kind of like this. It's getting there. You yeah. Know? It's just, it's crazy. What's that other movie, Contagion? Yeah, like, which is not streaming anywhere. Come on. I know. Like, how can you not capitalize on this? Like, yeah, <laughs> give it it's trending, folks. Literally. I know. Yeah, but yeah, so I just can't wait to see what happens. But yeah, this is a crazy time to be alive and like just how many people are affected by this and just mm -hmm. uh, like that's what hurts. It's just like how many people are affected by this and seeing that, you know, how you said you lost two jobs, our Nevada Center, you know, they lost, you know, they closed down this their, yeah, yeah, the Denver Center just announced that they were trying to, to re reschedule Choir Boy and um, uh, Until the Flood. They just announced, uh, like literally 30, 45 minutes ago, that they can't, so they're canceled. Wow. You know, so it's just like all those people are out of work. <clears throat> you know, so just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Did I, you see okay. me slap at the cat with a pillow? Yes, totally. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Yeah. Sorry. That no, happened. You're good. Screw uh, with a window when she shouldn't be. Uh, anyway. I didn't mean to distract from what you're talking about. Yeah, this is a tough time for everybody. I mean, it affects, it's so funny. Like, I mean, as it was happening last Thursday, I was driving to a rehearsal mm. and I got an email saying, hey, we're going to close school two weeks early. Okay. Uh -huh. I, I kind of saw that coming. Yeah. Then like 10 minutes later, I got an email that said, hey, we're going to cancel the show up in the Springs. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, fuck. Okay, well, there goes $225 a week. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the rehearsal space for this next thing for local lab, we get, hey, we got to stop. Management's coming over for an emergency message. And you're like, oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> you just kind of yeah. saw it all coming. And for me, I'm, I'm really good at thinking in terms of how will it affect me? Yes. Right? And then for like the first 20 minutes, you're just kind of stuck in this like, well, shit, I got to adjust this. I got to, I got to, I got to, I, 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 I. I and know. Then, and then you're like, oh, fuck. 
I'm not the only person in this show. Mm-hmm. I'm not the, there are people who make theater their life. Like that's what keeps them going. And it sounds like to an extent, like stage management is <laughs> your bread and butter. Basically. And if, and if they're closing down theaters that I you're mean, working at. Yeah. You know, it's just, it sucks. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it hardens me to say this, but it, what it feels like, it's just like, this is just one way to keep the poor poor. Mm. Yeah, You know, it's just like, I mean, I'm not poor. I, you know, I can pay for my rent. Yes. I have light. There's food in my fridge, you know, by all, like, if I were, God forbid, anything were to happen, you know, but if anything were to happen to me here, I know I could go home and I have somewhere to go to, you know, I'm not, Same. Home, Same. you know, but still like, I, like I said, there are some people who don't have that, Oh yeah, who can't afford that. And it's just like, knowing that, it's just like, ah, oh, really? Like, really? Mm-hmm. Like, it just sucks, you know? Yeah. And, and, and like I said, like, it's, it's, it, it hits you, like, slowly every day. Like I said, like, yesterday was like, oh, it's two days off. Now it's three days off. And then it's just like the slowly realization of just like, yeah, you literally have no job and you don't know when you're going back. Yeah. You know, and that sucks. And like, I'm like, for all those people that still are working and they're like, oh, why am I working? Why am I still working? And we should be close. I'm like, take it just be careful you know take care of yourself if you're mm-hmm. feeling any type of sick stay home or if yeah. anybody comes into your workplace wherever you are whatever you're doing kick them out you know don't be scared to put your foot down because it's not only your health it's everybody else's health and who it could be passed on to you know That's but right. just be thankful you're still working and mm-hmm. you're still like still make that money i mean when i was at floyd's i knew it was coming so I was just like, I'm going to keep working until, and people were upset that we were still open. They're like, why are we open? I was like, I get it. I was like, I get it. We're, I mean, I don't even cut hair. And I was like, but the stylists, they are touching their head. If they, we do beard trims or touching their faces. Mm-hmm. I was like, so I get it. I was like, but they need money. I need money. So as long as we're open, I'm going to be here. I was yeah. like, I'm going to keep wiping stuff down, but hey, mama needs to check. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You, you got to make the most of it. I mean, you got to stay as positive as possible. Yeah. And it's hard. I mean, for some of us, like I know I'm, when I'm isolated for long stretches of time, like it, I'm already a person that's prone to depression. Mm-hmm. So when like that isolation, like kind of adds up and, and there's this quality that I feel of like, I'm spinning my wheels and I'm not creating anything or I'm not doing anything. And am exactly. I really, am I really existing at that point? Which oh, is I know. Cool. It's a, I know. It's a terrible way to feel sometimes, but it, it makes it makes these days hurt more. It's, it takes more time to find joy and stuff like that. And if you're, I mean, depending on what turns you on, whether it be sports, mm-hmm. uh, movies, just writing, some of that, I mean, like, yes, there's a lot of fodder here to create something yeah. on your own, mm-hmm. but maybe you're so locked up in how you're feeling that you can't tap into that. Yeah, you can't get it out. I mean, you're mm-hmm. just, the, your mind is just this amazing thing. Cause yes, you may be feeling like I want to write. Cause that's how I feel. Like, I feel like I should write something. I feel like I want to do something, but how can I even get what I'm, what's in my head and what I'm feeling emotionally? Cause those two things are in these like weird different places that I don't know how to put that out on paper just yet. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, so it's just like, yeah and that's who i also worry about too as you said people who do fall into depression as i said earlier like we as humans crave this human interaction you know Mm -hmm. it's like that's why when you hear people being in in prison that are you know in solitary confinement for like five years it's like are you crazy yeah that's torture like human beings are not meant to be alone like that we're meant to be in this community and you know like now if you want to separate yourself that's totally understandable i mean i've do, i've done that too i do that often yeah. i'm a, i'm a homebody myself <laughs> yeah um same but you know i also love like when i go into work or when i go into rehearsals or when i go and do a shows like and having that community and having those people that think like me or you know I can share thoughts, you know, and yeah. not be judged or, you know, share an idea about something and not, you know, have them riff off of that or be like, oh yeah, let's take it a step further, actually. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, it's just, yeah, that's what humans in need. And it's just, yeah, just being told you can't go outside. And that's, that's what makes you want to go outside more. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. 
It's like, don't yeah. touch that red button. Okay, I'm gonna touch it now. <laughs> the second you turn your back, I am touching that button. No, like I'm. <laughs> yep. It's exactly like immersive theater. Don't mm -hmm. touch the actors. They, that's what they want to do. <laughs> oh, God. What I show? Know. Sorry, what were you gonna say? Oh no, I was gonna say I know that feeling very well. Like yes. being being an actor in one of those plays, and then somebody wanting, even me knowing that I'm watching an immersive piece. Going like, oh, I want to touch the fake cat. Yeah. Like, you know, like, what am I doing? That's a prop. That I don't want to fuck that up. As long as it's been allowed. As yeah, long as it's been invited. Exactly. <laughs> that, but that cat can't speak, so I'm not going to get consent from the cat. <laughs> and I can't stop the yeah. show. They're speaking German. Like, what's happening? Yeah. Anyway. Oh, I wanted to say so bad. Uh, oh, oh that show's so bad. I heard so many good <laughs> things about it, and I love Amanda. Like, uh, so yeah. good. Uh, no, what shows were you working on that you got? I I was um, really fortunate to break in at Local Lab. So we're, I was doing one of the reads and with a great cast. I was working with mm -hmm. Timothy McCracken and Simone St. John, who I'd never met before, who was like this powerhouse of an actress. Uh -huh. And then Brian Landis Falkins has been like an acquaintance of mine, business partner, friend for so long, but we've never been on stage together. And I was like, oh, oh shit, this is my <laughs> chance. This is our <laughs> chance. And in the middle of that, it just kind of yeah. fell away. And then after that, I was going to do Passion Play up at Colorado Springs for the Theater Works. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm hoping I still got the Crucible lined up at Miner's Alley, but they've closed their doors for a time. I up know. I'm, I'm telling you, my next gig is supposed to be Theater of the Mind. And mm. I'm hoping, I mean, it looks like they're still working on set stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll see the ATD. I'm friends with him on Facebook. So I'll see that he'll post pictures okay. of them working on it because we're off site. But then again, I just don't know how long this like more than 10, 50, 200 people thing is going to be, you yeah. know, and like, so... We'll see if that pushes our our state start date back at all, but yeah. and I hope not. I mean, I'm like I've already been off from what uh, Good Night Moon for a month now, and I'm like, okay, I'm I need theater again. <laughs> right. We're well, here now with us, the ghost. I know, Podcast. right? It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, we're creating. We're creating as we go. It's all riffing. We are. Yeah. We are. yeah. Um, what are some of your favorite productions that you've worked on? I'm gonna shift gears and get us. Yeah, for sure. So positive. I know, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, oh man, I mean Garth the Batage. <laughs> no, right? They're all just so, they're all just so different. I mean, I can't say I have like a favorite, but like all of them were just so different. Like Remote Denver, I don't know if you and that's not even a sh a theater show. I don't know if you got to do that one. It was with Off Center. So it was a group of 50. Um group of 50 audience members they were told to meet at uh, mariposa and 13th street which is a park mm -hmm. um they were given headphones and on the headphones it said just hang out in the park wait we'll come on and we'll tell you what to do once everybody got there we they put on their headphones and a voice guided them from mariposa all the way back to the denver center so we got on the rtd we went through union station we walked down 17th, um, and then we turned off of, I forget which, which road it is, probably like Curtis or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, we went through a different alley. There was like a, we split up into different, the, the group of 50 split up into three different groups at one wow. point. Then when we got back together, there was a little celebration and dance, and then it ended with them on the eighth floor of the garage center for the Denver Center. Mm -hmm. with this puff of smoke oh. uh, overlooking the mountains at like sunset basically oh. beautiful but Perfect. just you know that wasn't even a show i mean it was a show but you know everybody was hearing basically the same thing but it was just how how humans and the city are interacting and you know what voices are they following you know what's their own voice who's going to remember them you know, mm -hmm. what's, what are we, you know, what do we want to leave behind? It was all these questions about self and, you know, just human interaction and, and how the earth is interacting with each other, just how you've evolved with it. It was an amazing piece. And mm -hmm. just seeing how the audience reacted to that um, was awesome. It's like, but, you know, it's totally different. It wasn't in a theater setting. Mm -hmm. You know, but then there's like guards, which I really, it was so much fun. There was also five gallons of blood that we had to prepare every night. And that's got to be hard work. Play it, yeah. you know, and clean it. We had to filter it, you know, something totally different. Yeah, it was tedious, but 
so much fun also mm -hmm. you know and like that i mean show, that me show also really was, close while you sprayed me down with that hose back i know so. right yeah. <laughs> thanks for not the, laughing when you saw me in my underwear it was a wet t-shirt contest every night <laughs> <laughs> It's great. Oh man, and the chafing. Let's talk oh, about the, the chafing. chafing. Well, I mean, <laughs> I didn't get to experience the chafing. You did. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. I wore tights for two months after that show. Oh man! <laughs> but you know, that was also just such a fun show. You know, like getting to experience that. You know, and calling that, and or like seeing that happen, and having the crew. You know, you know, coming up with different ideas with Steven, You know, just mm -hmm. like how to drain it, how to clean it. And, you know, just the precautions that we took for y'all, yeah. like we couldn't get the backstage area, you know, dirty. So what are we doing? You know, so mm -hmm. it was always just reinventing, you know, and just yeah. coming up with new ways. Um, Wild Party was awesome. Yeah. That was a lot <laughs> we, of fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, moving 250 or 208 people from one room to another and you're not fully in charge of it is scary as fuck. But awesome. yeah. yeah, watching that happen and it happened in about, I think we got it down to like between six and seven minutes, which is what Amanda wanted, was awesome. Nice. You know, and they're not feeling like a break or a lag in the show, which is what you hope for, mm -hmm. was awesome. You know, it was just this continuous vibe that, you know, that happened. Um, sure, there might've been some chaos, but you know, that was just so, it was such a crazy experience to be a part of, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, in graduate school, I called a show that had rain. I was working on Grapes of Wrath. And at the end, there's that rain scene. Mm -hmm. And I got to call Rain Go, which is always a fun thing. I want to call Fire or Pyro mm -hmm. is the next thing that I want to do just to make that happen. <laughs> nice. Hopefully soon enough. But, you know, I've done rain, which is awesome. I think I've done snow. Um, but yeah. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Do you find, um, as from your position, that immersive theater hits harder, or is there a balance between immersive and traditional quote unquote theater, for lack of a better phrase? I I mean, it's harder in that things are always evolving, things are always changing, and it, you have to have a certain mindset to work it and be willing to go with the flow. Because if you are one to just want to hold on the reins and be in control of everything, you're gonna have a hard time because mm -hmm. things are always changing. Yeah. You know, not only with like design wise or directing wise or just like within the production itself, but add an audience to that, mm. totally different thing. You know, the audience is always that last character to the show, yeah. but then when you make them an actual piece <laughs> and invite them, that's a totally different story because then you don't know what the hell is going to happen and you can't plan forever. As much as we try to, as a stage manager, to plan for every single scenario that could happen and try to have plans for them, mm -hmm. shit's going to happen that you didn't even plan for. Yep. You know, so it's just like, well, here we go. This is how you have to deal with it. Um, you know, so it's just, it's, it's crazy. But then things like that happen in traditional theater too. We're just, things could happen out of nowhere, you know, where you've never expected this to happen. And here you are just trying to figure it out, you know, and it, and it, it becomes hard, you know, uh, when the entire time it was the smooth process, nothing happened. It was your traditional theater of rehearsal, this, 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 and then out of nowhere, it's like wrench thrown. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I also love a challenge. So I like, I like the immersive stuff. I like, you know, not only the challenge and just what are we going to do in the production, but just in myself, like, what am I going to learn about myself with this show? Yeah. You know, what, how, where am I going to be pushed with this one? You know, and it's always good having that experience of like, oh, I've dealt with this before. I know what to do. Um, but, you know, feeling uncomfortable um, sometimes is fun <laughs> in theater, you know, being scared is fun, you know, yeah. in theater. That's where the growth comes from. Yeah, it does. so I'm told. I, I, <laughs> right but it's so true i mean if you got it right every single time which is awesome then where are you learning where are you growing mm -hmm. from that you know it's like it that's why i love tech too because that's the time for the stage manager to get everything together you know when mm -hmm. shit starts happening you know so it's like in those times where you're calling a hard sequence and you can't get i'm like fuck i'm gonna fucking get this i'm gonna get this shit like let's do it again i'm doing it for me one more time 
Mm. And I love when the designers are like, yeah, go for it. Cause they also want to make sure that what they're seeing or what they have in mind is going to happen. And that's what I'm trying to get done too. So it's like, no, I'm going to get this shit. So Mm -hmm. for me, it's that goal of just like, yeah, we're going to do this. Keep Um, going. But I love that challenge. Yeah. Like making that happen. Yeah. That's a great, uh, that, that's a great tie in. Uh, I, what, aside from pinpointing your calls and how, whatever, what, what is tech week like for you? Is it always stressful? I mean, or does it depend on the show? It depends on the show. I mean, every tech is going to be, I mean, if you, if you've done theater and you've done it for a while, you know, tech's going to be slow mm-hmm. and you know, it's paying grudgingly slow, just like it's slow, you know? Yeah. Um, but the, I mean, and I always try, and I, I always try reminding the actors about this, even professional, non-professionals, whatever, your first time doing it. It's like, let's just remember we've been doing our work. Now it's for the other side to be doing, this is our job, you know? So just yeah. be patient, do whatever you need to do. If you have a question, please feel free to ask, you know, cause of course we're not going to forget about you, but also just, just remember like now we're working, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, getting your life creating yeah you know we want to make sure that they look good sound good you know that everything looks put together and and in one piece you know um but yeah i mean it can be stressful just depending again on what show it is i mean but a two-hander where you think is going to be easy can turn into the hardest thing you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and it could be you know a vast amount of things it could be that you know lights or sound or you know those two things aren't working or a set piece that you thought wasn't that you thought was going to work wasn't going to happen mm. you know so you know it just it just depends um does your I, focus change it does it does um but i still try to keep that i also try to be playful too you know throughout mm. the entire thing you know because again like we know the process so i try having fun with it um but yeah um I, I do get more focused, you know, I, I have a more, you know, pointed focus of, of a goal, you know, cause you know, I do have a set goal. We have to get this text in a yeah. certain amount of time. I have to be mindful of my actor's time of, you know, the crew's time, especially, and mm-hmm. be mindful of breaks and when we're ending and just making sure that we're all, you know, rested and ready to go. Cause again, we're all trying to reach the same goal and it can't happen if somebody is, not feeling good or they're not feeling supported or they're not feeling like something's being complete or being heard Mm -hmm. you know so it's just like just being mindful about all those little things Mm -hmm. um so yeah i I do become more focused in that um Mm -hmm. in that sense um but so playful you know like i said i try to keep it fun you know i I don't want it i don't want it to feel like work you know like i always tell people like my job for a living is i get to help adults play pretend Mm -hmm. like how much better does that get? You know, and it, again, like it just pro- it progressed from kindergarten to now of just like helping my friends basically because my coworkers then become friends, then become mm-hmm. family. Like I'm here with friends and family helping them play pretend and we get nice. to do this. And yeah, it is work, you know, it's yeah. hard work. Um, and there are days where I'm like, oh, I don't want to get out of bed. But then you get there and it's just like, yeah, this is where did it go. Nice. You know, like this is, yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> when we get to this part of the podcast, I always ask the same question. It, it, it does take a little different tone now. And, and, mm. and after you're done talking, I'll probably pick up and yeah. do my own little speech. But uh, what, Ghostlight, what piece of advice do you wish was left on for you when you started your career? Um, I was thinking about this earlier, too. And I think, I mean, just for me, I, I was always like, ready to solve the problem and I still try to keep this in mind um of just stay quiet and listen mm. you know if someone comes up to you with a problem <laughs> or whatever it is like the Rona better not be the Rona <laughs> no 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 I'm calling <laughs> it's the scotch it, the ice is melted so now it's just pure scotch so, Woo! yeah don't uh, worry good um I'm coughing over here I know right and good yeah. in your elbow. just All dab right. on him yeah right <laughs> no but yeah just shut up and listen, you know, stay quiet and listen, you know, because for me, like I said, I was always ready to solve the problem. So even start talking, it's like, oh, okay, we could do it. And it's like, just wait, mm-hmm. fully hear everything out and then see where you can go. Cause it just, it, it may not even be the situation of what that problem is. It may be something else, you know, yeah. you know, 
So it's just stay quiet and listen. I think I wish I would have got that, you know, because even though you're trying to be helpful, sometimes you're just running over people. Mm -hmm. It's like, totally. let, them, let them be heard for a little bit and then, and then speak. Yeah. So many times, it's like, that's all they want. Yeah. They just want to be heard. Just be heard, you know. Yeah. Rick, that's, that's, that's perfect, man. Thank you so much for sharing that. Because like, I think that's one of the best, one of the best notes you can give any person that you come across is it's not always what you think it is mm -hmm. or what you expect it to be. And if you don't come at it from a personal angle and you hear other people, you'll find some balance. Yeah. And you'll, you'll get a decent outcome in the end. Yeah. And you'll find the res resolution somewhere in there, you know, it's absolutely. Just, just listen, hear them out just for a little bit. Yeah. Definitely. Wow. Yeah. Oh man, Rick, thank you so much for joining us today on this very special version of the ghost lights podcast. Yay. Yeah. To all my ghosties out there, if you're listening to this, um, thank you so much for supporting us. I hope hearing my voice and hearing Rick's voice talking about the things that we've talked about has put a smile on your face and, yeah. and put some different things in perspective. I mean, I've had nothing but actors on thus far and a, a casting agent, but she oh, started out as an actor as well. So, I mean, to have a stage manager's perspective, somebody who is the, in my opinion, the extension of the director. Yeah. And, and I'm sure that's the case for a lot of people. I'm not, I'm not reinventing the wheel when I say that, but mm -hmm. I mean, to have you here to talk about your perspective of it, it, I mean, it, 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 it hammers home that this is a community. Yeah. We are a community. Yeah. And the thing I know about communities is that if you don't pay it lip service, we will come back. Mm -hmm. We will be strong, just like we were beforehand. Please wash your hands. Six feet is no joke. Um, be smart and be thankful. Yeah. And if you can give something to people you know need help, please make yourself available to that. Mm -hmm. um, no matter what it is, no matter how small, donation, um, dropping off some canned goods, anything. Because there are people out there who who are working paycheck to paycheck, yeah. working multiple jobs, and now they don't have those opportunities because they're non-essential, quote unquote. And be there for them. And yeah. Rick, check, anything to add? Yeah, check in on your friends if you know they're sad, if you know they're depressed, or even if you don't know, let them know that you're there for them. Absolutely. Um, for those that are scared right now, it's okay to be scared. Mm -hmm. It's a scary time. Your feelings are so valid. It's okay. But also know that you have people out there that are willing to talk, willing to listen to you, willing to hear you cry if you if that's what you feel like doing. You know, just know that somebody's out there, you know, always willing to help you and hear you out. And, you know, again, check in on your friends, see how they're doing. It's a perfect time to make phone calls. <laughs> nice. What are those again? I know, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. If I'm not texting you, we don't have a relationship. Yep. <laughs> Get close with people again. That's right. Yeah. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is episode 41. It's the Ghost Lights podcast. The guest, Rick Morales, um, stage manager, artist extraordinaire. And uh, the song is War by the Hypnotic Brass Ensemble. Dan Rib, my extra special producer, Thanks, do the Dan. damn thing. Oh, he got up. Ha ha.